Talo Falava, hello Olguera, welcome to the Pacific Way. Tonight we bring you a story on an innovative approach to climate change adaptation, where children play an integral role as agents of change. The Child-Centered Climate Change, or 4CA project, recognizes that children's well-being is closely connected with that of their community. In Fiji, the 4CA project is implemented by the Partners in Community Development Fiji, or PCDF. Join us now as we follow a PCDF team as they carry out a pilot project on 4CA in six villages and several schools in Fiji's Ra province. On the northeast side of the main island of Vitilevu in the Fiji Islands, in the province of Ra, lie a number of villages. Some are nestled inland, snuggled between the hills, while others are situated along the coastline. Six villages in the province have been identified to carry out a pilot project on child-centered climate change adaptation, initiated by Plan International Australia. The Child-Centered Climate Change Adaptation Project, or 4CA as it is known, is an innovative approach to climate change adaptation, where children play an integral role as agents of change. There was one research uh, with FLAN International conducted in Southeast Asia about the um, children um, and um, disaster risk reduction, especially um, research on uh, the child center DRR, um, which also in, uh, involved somehow the climate change issues as well. Then um, the outcome of that research is somehow um, a sort of a realization that children can uh, significantly contribute not only to the disaster risk reduction but can be part of the climate change adaptation which is which before that looked to be a bit more complicated science issues and we're thinking of maybe children would not be really able to contribute but we came up with the f very firm outcome of the research that children can also be part of that process. <laughs> The program model is based on Plan Australia's child-centered community development approach, which is rights-based and where communities are supported to develop the structures and skills needed to provide a safe and healthy environment in which children are able to realize their full potential. This approach recognized that children's well-being is fundamentally connected to the community and whose lives will improve when their family and community situation improves as well. More importantly, our engagement was from the approach, from the realization that children are not only the group who need assistance, but they can also positively contribute to reduce the risk. They can be part of the process of reducing risk. They need the special attention that is there. Uh, that is the general understanding of all of the organizers working in the sector. But we are now um, engaging with children, realizing that they also do have the capacity to contribute. They can do, they can, they can understand the issues. Um, they can understand the risk for their, them. They can also, um, come up with the ideas or plan which would help them to reduce that risk. And not only that, they can also contribute as a whole to reduce the risk in community. The foundation for the people of the South Pacific International, FSPI, a regional organization based in Fiji, manages the project in six Pacific Island countries, which includes Papua New Guinea, Kiribati, Solomon Islands, Tuvalu, Tonga and Fiji. The goal of the 4CA program is safe and resilient communities where children and young people can contribute to reducing risks related to climate change. Involving children not only requires a change in mindset for village elders, but also requires community involvement 
one that sees children as important contributors to the decision-making process when it comes to disaster risk reduction and climate change. And while this is slowly happening in these six countries, there are still challenges that lay ahead. What is important, however, is that a start has been made. As I see, you know, in the Pacific, because our culture is so much on respect, sometimes it's very difficult for our children to talk to adults very openly. And uh, so I think uh, the adults too, they need to be educated on the value of listening to children because children also have some valuable contributions uh, to make. So these has been some of the challenges where we cannot really get children you know, participating that openly. And the other challenge is that when communities come up with action plans, etc., it's very hard to feed into the national uh, plans which is in place. <laughs> In Fiji, the 4CA project is implemented by the Partners in Community Development Fiji, PCDF. The project began with a training of trainers workshop, bringing together community trainers from the six villages to learn and better understand the issues of disaster risk reduction and climate change. The workshop that was held in Nandavi was a training of trainers. We were thinking of training community facilitators on basics of climate change and how it is related to disaster. So we're trying to build the capacity so that they can go back to their own community and build the capacity of their community and telling them what is climate change, how it relates to them, what are some of the impact that they'll face in terms of climate change. So we were thinking of building the capacity of community so that they can be there because they are the one that will be there during their lifetime in the community that can help the whole community know more about climate change and disaster. For the community trainers, invaluable lessons have been learned, while at the same time getting to know more about climate change and disaster risk reduction and the impacts of it in their own communities. <laughs> While children are valued and cared for in their communities and their voices ring loudly on the playing fields, their views and opinions are not normally heard in village meetings. With the 4CA project, the focus changes, giving voice to children's views and opinions and valuing their contribution. 
Master Inosi, a participant in the workshop and a school teacher, came to the workshop with little knowledge on the subject of climate change. Uh, I think the only thing that we know is uh, what we uh, face day in and out of the, the climatic change. But to go deep and uh, find out uh, what are the causes and coming to know in this course that we are the root cause of all these climatic changes, that's another thing I, I, I like about this workshop. <laughs> The challenge for Master Inosi is transferring what he has learned from the workshop into the classroom. That is one of the issues I'm going to go and uh, especially to these uh, young children to try and get into their thinking that all these uh, actions that men are doing, that we are doing, they are, in the end, they are going to uh, create all these climatic changes and in the end, we are the ones who are going to suffer. And especially when these changes are rapidly occurring, so as they grow up, they are the ones who are going to feel the full impact of these climatic changes. So I like these workshops being child-centered so that it targets them. At the end of the training workshop, the challenge for the community facilitators is to return to their respective villages to share their knowledge and skills on climate change and disaster risk with their communities. When they come back to their own community, they come and train their community. So they train the community and one of the main uh, focus for them is to try and come up with a community climate change adaptation plan and the community disaster risk reduction plan. So what we're trying to do is that the plan to be, to, 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 to see that the voice of the youth and the children are also in that plan. So we were thinking of that we don't come to do the training, for them as a community to do the training, uh, do the training to the community, comes up with a plan that is already, that is agreed by the whole community so that once uh, it's, it's time for implementation, all of them will implement because they all agree on that plan. So the process is that after from Nandabe, they go back to the community, they do the same training, they come up with those two plans, the community adaptation plan and the community disaster risk reduction plan. And from that plan, they can know whatever project that they can implement in their own community to help them adapt to the adverse impact of climate change. With the community training completed, it was time to visit the schools. The first school is Mataso Primary School, located inland. The senior classes gathered for their session. <laughs> Come, come, can
It was clear that the children understood what climate change was and the impact it's having in their community. One of the impacts was soil erosion, and as part of the community adaptation plan, planting more trees was part of it. For the children, while getting out and planting the trees was fun, it was educational at the same time and allowed them to be part of the process. While the oral tradition is slowly fading, in some of the villages, children gather to listen to stories and learn about the history of their village, but also better understand some of the changes that have been taking place. These are stories they will hopefully one day pass on to their children. Along the coast lies Naviti Levu School, and Master Inosi is busy in the classroom asking the children what they understand about climate change. If there is a flood, which of these things here in the map of Narukuni village would be the most vulnerable? Yes, sir. Naviti Levu District School, very good. Yes, Chadaro. Narukuni village. Narukuni village. What will happen to Narukuni village? Lubu. Sana? Lubu. Lubu Bawandu and Narukuni village. For this school and for the rest of the villages along the coast, sea level rising was a major threat, and as part of their adaptation plan, planting mangrove was top of the list. For these boys, this is their village, and as they grow older, they know it won't be the same as they remember it. For them, it seems unfair that as children, they're not contributors to climate change, but will be part of the future generation that will face the impact of it. All they can do now is to assist in planting more mangroves with the hope that this will help a little. Villagers in the six communities have undergone training to learn and understand more about what climate change is and how it is impacting their lives and how to adapt to it. They have also learned about disasters and how to reduce the risk. But one very important component of the whole training is the participation of children and the integral role they need to play in the decision-making process of climate change adaptation. What we did, we built the capacity of the elders, try to give space for the children. When they're trying to come up with a community plan, one of the things that we, that we ask them to do is that for the school, for the school committee, once they finish their plan, once they, they finalize the school plan that, that uh, en encompasses the voice of the children, we ask them to present it to the community so that the community can know, oh, this is what the children uh, are expressing with regards to their perspective on climate change and how it impacts them. So when this, when this committee presented to the committee, to the community, the community started to, to put some of those ideas from the school plan to their community plan. So in that way, the voice of the, uh, the, the children in school are also, uh, are also included in the whole community plan. So whenever they implement any activity that helps them to adapt to climate change, they are also implementing what the children want for them so that the children can be more resilient on climate change. Eh? In Fiji, 
This innovative approach on child-centered climate change adaptation has just begun, and there is still a long way ahead. However, like any journey, it begins with small steps, and so far, empowering communities and integrating children in the decision-making process has gotten off to a positive start. For Watisoni and his team, there is still much to do. But one thing for certain, they have planted the seed of change in the attitudes and mindset of the communities. And they are confident it will grow. A very immediate expectation is the successful implementation of the program itself. But that's just the beginning. It, 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 you can't read from uh, the design that this is just a pilot project. And if you see our reads, then um, it's uh, only a small area or a small segment of a country where we can reach from our program. But our aim is to take those examples which would prove best or at least better in a context to adapt, to empower the children and community to be able to adapt to a changing context, changing environment, changing socio-political context um, through this uh, program intervention. And we will, we will be taking those examples as a kind of model to convince the policy and then a strategy to change it, to accommodate it so that the children's perspective would be hot, so that the good examples in, in, in community would be replicated and expanded throughout the nation, throughout the region. That's our ultimate target. We've come to the end of the show and I hope you've enjoyed today's story. Remember, you can find us on Facebook and on YouTube if you'd like to know more about our stories or about the program. Until next time, Nisa Mode, Looking You.